Welcome back everyone to another weather at a glance video. In today's forecast, we're going to be going over our official fall forecast for the fall season of 2023, all coming up in just a bit. All right, and here on our first slide, we're going to be going over our precipitation anomaly forecast map for this fall season. And what this is going to be showing you is what kind of precipitation you can expect, whether you can expect more or less than what you typically would see in a fall season. So here starting off, we're going to go to the slightly below average down here for the southern United States. And again, this is kind of different because what we've been seeing lately is we're heading into El Nino. We are into El Nino as of right now, but we are headed into a stronger El Nino and what you would typically expect with that type of event is a strong subtropical jet stream that would be kicking a lot of moisture down here to the south. Now, what we are seeing as of late is drier conditions generally. Now, again, there's going to be precipitation down here in the south because we see a lot of that humidity. And obviously, we see that monsoon season kicking up down here for the southwest as well. Now, however, we are expecting slightly below average precipitation with that. So even though we do see rain this fall, we're likely not going to see as much it's going to be a slight decrease so you're not really going to notice it but if you were to go outside and measure every single day uh, and compare that to past years for the fall season it's going to be a little bit below average from what we usually see now over here for the western coastline over here for the pacific northwest and parts of california we do see the same type of thing slightly below average precipitation. And this is going to be due to the polar jet stream staying further up north and not providing as much precipitation to the Pacific Northwest and parts of California that would normally see that this time of year. Now, this doesn't mean you're going to receive no precipitation whatsoever, similar to what we said for the south, but we do see high pressure kicking off here for much of the Northwest, the Pacific Northwest. And we do see over here far off the coastline, we do see an upper level high pressure system that is creating a nice ridge over the northeastern Pacific Ocean, and that is kicking the jet stream further up north above this area. So at times we will see systems come on shore for areas of Portland, Oregon and Seattle, but we aren't really expecting too much precipitation to affect those areas from what we would typically see. Now, moving into the more extreme regard to this region, we do see the below average region. We're going to start off here down in Texas because we have two of these. And first off, we have been seeing a lot of below average precipitation so far with the type of ridging setup that we've been seeing. It's been blocking storms and rainy conditions from entering this Texas, Louisiana area. And we have been seeing a type of drought persisting. And obviously this has been going on for a couple of years, the drier conditions that is. But now that we see this higher pressure ridge developing down here throughout the south, we are still seeing it continue onward. So this is kind of deflecting what we would typically see with an El Nino because we aren't seeing as much of a kick with the subtropical jet stream because none of that precipitation and moisture can get down there. Now, this likely will change as we move further towards winter, but as of now, I am still expecting below average precipitation for these areas. We do also see below average precipitation. And what's interesting here is we do usually see very dry conditions for California and parts of Oregon. Now, as we move northward towards Oregon, we do see more precipitation, but Northern California, anywhere from San Francisco to Portland, Oregon, typically see precipitation around this time of year. We start to see those systems start to pick up again and move on from the Pacific coastline here. But that might be a slight decrease as we were talking about, and we are expecting below average conditions of precipitation to come with that. So less storms overall and drier conditions. Now on the flip side of that, we are expecting increased precipitation east of the Sierra Nevada mountains. And we do see anywhere from Eastern Oregon all the way throughout much of the Northern United States, we do see slightly above average precipitation. Now, again, this doesn't mean you're going to see crazy amounts of precipitation. This isn't going to be big rain events, but we do see a lot of moisture being kicked up above around this high pressure that seems to be lingering down to the south. Again, we were talking about that high pressure region that seems to be building that ridge that is creating all this heat and drier conditions. So what we see so far is that that moisture has to go somewhere. And what it's doing is it's kicking further up north. So we are seeing that moisture kind of send northward over above this ridge and we do see a lot of these areas to the north receiving that precipitation as a result now are we going to see crazy amounts of precipitation 
likely not, but we might see slightly increased precipitation for these areas. Now over here for the east, we do see a similar setup with that. We see precipitation and overall moisture being kicked up northward. And we do see somewhat of a high pressure region here developing over the Great Lakes oftentimes, but I don't believe that's going to be so strong where it's going to block out these systems. We do see that kind of bounce around a little bit, and sometimes it goes northeast, sometimes it dissipates altogether. So we do see some room for precipitation to carry forward and over here into the eastern United States. We do see systems kind of send down from Canada all the way across the Great Lakes, picking up that Great Lakes moisture and moving eastward with the jet stream. And we do see kind of a troughing event end up over here, which could create stormier conditions and rainier conditions overall. So obviously this area does receive a good bit of precipitation throughout the entire year. And especially around the fall time, we do see somewhat of good precipitation for this area. So that means we won't see increased precipitation to the point where it's going to be above but we may see some slightly increased conditions overall. All right, now moving on to the temperature aspect, what are we going to be expecting temperature wise for our fall season? Starting off, we're going to go over into the slightly below average region here over in the Pacific Northwest. And as you can see so far, we do see slightly below average conditions forecasted anywhere north of San Francisco, all the way over to Seattle and up into Washington there. We see all of these areas being affected by some slightly cooler conditions. Now, as of lately, we have been seeing slightly warmer conditions for these areas, and even at times some pretty warm conditions along the Pacific Northwest. We have been seeing those heat waves kick up. Anytime that ridge pushes a little bit westward, we do see those uh, warmer conditions moving up over these areas, but that may dissipate throughout the fall, and we may actually see some cooler weather affecting these areas. So these areas are typically pretty cool around this time of year. Again, this is more of a temperate climate, so we aren't really going to expect too much craziness going on over here regarding the cooler weather, but we do see some slightly cooler chances, maybe a couple degrees below average, nothing too out of the ordinary, but some slightly colder conditions overall. Now over here for the eastern United States, we see a similar story anywhere from Charlotte, North Carolina, all the way up into the northeast, we could see at times some cooler conditions. Now, do keep in mind that we will see some fluctuations in our jet stream and overall atmospheric setup, which means that we could see warmer conditions over here at times, but that would be a very brief setting and it wouldn't really regard the entire season overall. So what we do see is we could see some slightly below average conditions, again, maybe one to two degrees below average, but nothing too crazy and nothing too out of the ordinary for that. Moving on to the slightly above average region, this includes much of the United States. So much of the United States is at least slightly above or above. And we do see that anywhere from Georgia all the way up through the Great Lakes and over here throughout much of the Western United States as well. And this is due to that persistent ridge and heat dome that we've been talking about for many months now. And you can see these areas overall are just outlined in these warmer conditions. So if you're in the slightly above average region, what we usually talk about is, again, we talk about not being too extreme. So it's not like you're going to walk outside and think, oh, it's going to be insanely hot today, way hotter than it usually is. Obviously, at times it could be very hot, but it's not going to be too out of the ordinary from what you would typically see, just slightly increased overall. Now, increasing on the scale, we are going to the above average region. And here you can see outlined in the orange anywhere from the southern United States up through Chicago and over here westward up into Montana and down throughout the southwest United States. We do see those above average conditions persisting. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, well, what about for these southern areas? They are very hot. How could they be getting above average temperatures on top of that? And we do see this high pressure region that is building off and moving around down throughout the south is creating those warmer conditions than what we would typically see on a normal setup. So basically, at times, we could see that high pressure ridge develop over here eastward. It could push eastward or it could move westward. It's always fluctuating and moving around, but we do see that kind of building up and pushing all this heat over this area. So at times, you may be experiencing above average temperatures over here, and at times, it may only be slightly above average. But overall, we are expecting above average conditions throughout the entire fall season. Now, moving on to the more significant side of the scale, we do see a well above average region up here for the north central United States and some of the Great Lakes over here. And we do see at times we could potentially see up to about 40 degrees above average temperatures. So let's say if your fall temperature is typically sitting in the 60s, a nice comfortable 60 degree day for your high temperature, you could see about close to 100 or so degrees Fahrenheit. And that's not a guarantee. We're not forecasting exact temperatures for your fall season. But what we are giving you is examples of how that could fluctuate for your fall season. So let's say if you see 40 degrees on average, you could see up to 80 degrees Fahrenheit temperatures. It's not going to be an everyday event, but we do see chances with this ridge pushing northward and all of that heat building up. We could see a lot 
of heat building up over here over the north central United States. Now, this is very typical for El Nino. So this is an aspect that we were expecting with the El Nino conditions. But overall, this is definitely going to be a warmer fall for you guys up here. So please do keep that in mind. Now, when we talk about fall, we obviously talk about fall foliage because that's an important part of the fall season. Now, not everybody sees fall change in fall colors, but for a lot of us in the United States, we do see those changes. So let's go ahead and talk about what will you see? Will you see delayed or slightly early? And first off, we're going to start off in the one single region here for the slightly early region. Um, and take this very lightly because, again, this is only slightly early. So this could mean about a week or so earlier, possibly. So it's really not going to be anything you're not going to be seeing fall foliage within a week or so. That's not what we're saying here. But let's say you see it about the middle of October, maybe mid to late October. You could see that maybe a week or two earlier than that, simply because we've already had persistent rainfall in the spring that has already given time for a nice wet condition over the spring, which is what we want for fall foliage. And then we have a drier season coming up where we're not seeing too much storminess precipitation that will kind of shake away the fall foliage so we're really seeing the conditions with cooler conditions moving in as well we do see at times even though it's hot and we do have some of these areas in slightly above average conditions for temperatures we could see cooler waves come down more frequently at nighttime and that's going to create those cool crisp nights that's going to give that peak fall foliage and could bring that a little bit earlier just slightly earlier than what you would typically see now, over here outlined in the light gray, we do see much of the United States is affected by this slightly delayed region. Now, much like the slightly early, we said for the slightly early, that would be about one to two weeks earlier. This may be one to two weeks later. Again, that's a very rough estimate. Keep in mind that this isn't exact and we're not really forecasting the exact date that you're going to see fall foliage. But we do expect that this could be slightly delayed simply because of the conditions that we've seen so far. A lot of the south and a lot of these areas have been experiencing drier conditions since spring. And we do see that we also have a lot of warmer conditions as well. And obviously for fall foliage, you need those cooler crisp nights and overall just cooler conditions during the fall to start kicking in that fall foliage change. And right now we don't really have that. So this could be slightly delayed until we start to reach those cooler conditions that are necessary for fall change. Now, moving on down here for the south, we do have a delayed region. So this could be about two to three weeks delayed. Um, and again, I'm saying that's a very rough estimate. So keep that in mind. Don't keep that exact and don't quote me on that. But that's delayed. And basically what we're saying is you're really not going to see fall fully derive when you would typically expect it. We've seen drier conditions since spring. We've seen very, very warm conditions. Overall, this is just not looking too good for these areas. Definitely not really expecting beautiful fall foliage here this year. And we do expect this to arrive on a delayed time frame simply because of how warm it is down there still. Again, we can't see fall foliage change when it's 80 to 100 degrees outside and 70 degrees at night. We definitely need those cooler conditions to kick in. And if that's going to happen around November, it's going to be a lot later. Than what we typically see and our final region of the delayed is up here anywhere from san francisco north of there to uh, seattle washington we do see delayed here as well we've seen drier conditions overall not too dry but we do have seen drier conditions accumulate over the course of the couple months and we have seen warmer conditions at times while we do expect slightly cooler conditions to be over this area during the fall we have already kind of done ourselves into a little ditch because of the way that we've already had drier conditions over the course of the spring and I do expect that to kind of be delayed for our season here. Finally, for the white region down here, this is where you're expecting no change whatsoever. This is pretty typical for a fall season. These areas don't normally see any change just due to the climate and the overall landscape. We don't really see any change for these areas, but especially this year, this may have been bumped up a little bit northward because of the intense heat that's accumulating down here in the south. But overall, no change for these areas. All right, now on our final forecast map here, we are looking at our overall forecast map. This is giving you a nice summary, basically, in a short word of what you could expect to see throughout your fall season. So starting off in the Pacific Northwest, we're going to look at that dry at times region. So here we see generally, again, this is pretty self-explanatory, drier at times. So this doesn't mean you're going to see dry conditions 24-7, no rainfall whatsoever throughout the fall. That's not what we're saying. We're saying just drier conditions. So maybe you'll have a week or so where you don't see precipitation or so. It's definitely going to be a little bit drier here than what we would typically see with the typical rainy conditions that are for anywhere from Northern California up to Seattle, Washington. 
we may see some drier conditions move across this area. Now, for our largest region on the map, the warmer region, this is including a lot of the United States, and we do see anywhere from Southern California all the way to the East Coast throughout much of the Mid-Atlantic, we do see warmer conditions expected for these areas. So this isn't saying you're going to be boiling. This isn't saying you're going to be crazy hot all the time. But generally, your fall season will be warmer, and you will likely expect warmer conditions to affect much of your fall season. Now, moving on to our next region, we're looking at wet at times, and this is pretty self-explanatory, just generally wet at times. So not every day you're going to see a lot of precipitation every week, but we will see some chances where you could see some of that stormy action over here, especially when that moisture really kicks up over this ridge, and we will likely see some increased precipitation across this area. So more wet than usual throughout your fall season. Down here to the south, we have the sizzling region. So anywhere from Southern California around through Southern Arizona, all the way up through the Great Plains and down into the Southeast, we do see these areas in the sizzling region, which is indicating those very hot conditions that we've been seeing so far. And those do look to linger throughout much of the fall season. So those 80s, 90s, even reaching 100s, those don't look to be going anywhere anytime soon, folks, at least for the next month or so. We do see a lot of those sizzling conditions down there. And as things cool down, it still will likely be hot throughout the fall season. Now down here to the south, we have this really terrible looking colored region here. And this is the hot and dry region. We really aren't expecting anything too pleasant here again. And I'm sorry, guys, I know it's been a really brutal summer down here and all that. Um, I'm telling you, we're looking at conditions getting better by winter, but right now it is still expected to be hot and dry for much of these areas. This doesn't mean every day is going to be a 100 degrees plus, but we will see hot and dry conditions throughout much of your fall season this year. Up here for the orange region, we are expecting stormy conditions at times. So uh, this is kind of a, a almost a severe weather region almost. Um, I you definitely want to take this lightly, though, when you talk about severe storms, because this people think that it's going to be stormy every day. And that's not what we're saying. Um, but at times, you could see that moisture shift up here, and with the right setup, we could see some stormier conditions, thunderstorms, a couple severe weather events at times, and that's basically what we're talking about for this region for your fall season. Now over to the east, we have the wet region, a little bit less than the stormy region, so we aren't really expecting severe weather or storms to accumulate over here to the east, but we are expecting wet conditions. So anything from the west is going to move eastward with the jet stream, and we do expect anything that was out here to move eastward and overall precipitation and wet conditions out here to the northeastern United States. Now on our final region on the map, we are looking at cool late. And again, some of these areas are in the well above average temperature region. So you may be thinking to yourself, well, how can it be cool if it's going to be really warm? Well, this is talking about later fall. So we're talking about anywhere from mid-October to December. We're talking about more of the later side of fall. We are expecting things to cool down and really get nice and crisp and cold. I want to thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you did like this video, I would ask you to consider subscribing for more use forecasts free of charge. And I would ask you to consider following the Weather at a Glance official Facebook page for more inside information and complimentary personal forecasts when you message me on my Facebook page. Again, I want to thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.